Welcome to Daytime Ottawa here on Rogers TV. This is an important week, uh, not just for us here at Rogers TV, but right across the country. In fact, right around the world, because we are talking mental health all week long. It is Mental Health Week. We're going to be sharing some great personal stories over the entire week of those both living here in Ottawa locally and people from across the country. And we start off with one of Canada's greatest mental health ambassadors. He's a mental health advocate. He is also the founder of Sick Not Week. I am joined by Michael Landsberg. Michael, welcome to the show. Great to have you here. Really appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, even greater to be here. Thank oh, you, thank sorry. You, I already cut you off. <laughs> no, no, you know, I'll, 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 I'll be dominating within a minute. So <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I'd expect nothing less. Um, you know, for those people that aren't familiar, I mean, you're a household name here in Canada, but those who aren't familiar with, with your personal story, I know going back to, I know your story back to 2009, you had a guest on your show off the record who you asked about his struggles with depression, and, and that really made an impression on you, didn't it? Oh, yeah, it changed my life. It, it, well, actually, the interview didn't so much change my life. What the interview did was tee up change in my life. So I battled anxiety all my life and severe depression off and on from 1998 to 2009 when this show took place. I'd never spoken about it on the air, not because I was ashamed or embarrassed, but because I thought no one would care. I, thought, I figured people would go, oh, Lansberg knows a lot of people don't like him so he's talking about his depression right but then stefan riche was a guest on off depression in the 1990s so i self that'd be a good question yeah you know i wasn't trying to change the world i wasn't trying to make a difference in anyone's life i was just trying to do something that would be of interest i said to him before the show stefan would it be okay if i asked you about depression and he said i'd rather not talk about it so i said to him well if you'll talk about it i'll talk about it and he said to me what would you talk about and i told him and he said let's do it okay. we talked for maybe 90 seconds and what changed my life was the reaction to the show the emails that we got uh they they shocked me uh, and they shocked me so much that uh, I lamented the fact that I had wasted 10 years uh, doing off the record without talking about it. And I learned that there is huge value in talking about your mental health without showing shame or embarrassment, and most of all, without sounding weak. And that right. changed my life. Yeah, and then, you know, you decided to co-found Sick Not Weak. You know, I imagine, you know, just sharing your story and getting this overwhelming support and, and hearing from other people share their story, that really led to Sick Not Weak, didn't it? Yeah, you know what it was? It was like looking for a way to uh, expand it uh, and, and really just knowing that talking about your mental health battle is often enough to change somebody's life and often uh well not as often but it does happen where you can save somebody's life just by saying my name is michael landsberg i have an illness called depression and anxiety i'm on medication today i will be the rest of my life i understand suicide but you know what i'm not embarrassed i'm yeah. not ashamed and I'm not weak. And if somebody hears that and they have had a problem in their life saying simply that, maybe they'll be empowered to do so. Well, and many people that are, are struggling with their mental health live in, in isolation. And, and I know you've created this isolation nation. And um, through the pandemic, you know, I, you've, you've created that isolation nation 2.0 because you've seen this sort of parallel, right, that's happened during the pandemic of, of people's mental health suffering even further. Yeah, it's a huge issue. The Surgeon General in the U.S. came out, I guess, about six weeks ago, maybe two months ago, and said there is a pandemic of youth mental illness in the United States. He's talking about, I assume it would be the same thing here. Uh, there is a pandemic, and we have no way to grasp how deep this runs, and we have no idea how to handle it. So I, I think that, I, I think what you have is you've got a whole bunch of people who had mental illness before, and they've had it magnified. And then you've got a whole other group of people who are kind of suffering from COVID fatigue, yeah. where they're, I mean, you, you wouldn't say, oh, you should go see a psychiatrist, but you would try to give them some coping strategies to deal with what they're experiencing, which is frustration, which is anxiety about the future, which is, you know, being depressed about your current situation. So uh, we're a mess. <laughs> Yeah, well, you're not wrong. We certainly are. You have a great virtual event coming up. It's called Prescription for Care. T tell us about the event and how people can get involved, Michael. Yeah, well, some folks uh, at Teva Canada 
uh, decided that um, they have had initiatives in the past and they wanted to focus on caregivers. Uh, and they asked me if I would speak. And this is coming up on May the 10th. Uh, just go to tevacanada.com uh, slash prescription for care or just go to tevacanada.com and I assume that you'll find your way to prescription for care. Right. Uh, caregiving is enormously difficult for people with uh, if you have a mental illness. You know, if you sleep beside someone who suffers from severe depression, there is going to be a barrier up unless your partner has actually battled depression. Otherwise, no one can possibly understand what it's like. And therefore, no one, see the way I stress no one, it's kind of musical. No one <laughs> can appreciate how tough it is because at its core, mental illnesses rob us of the ability to experience joy. And that's an impossible thing to understand unless you've been through it. Michael, have you had your own caregiving experience? I have. I yeah. have, for sure. I mean, I, I, I think that, um, like, like I said, there is a huge difference between the person who is a caregiver who's been through it and then a person who's a caregiver who hasn't been through it. I obviously have been through it, am going through it, and that means that I understand the brain of, a, say, a, you know, a person with depression. Right. I understand it in a way, wait for it, this is going to sound like really, but I understand it better than a psychiatrist who hasn't been through it. I mean, you can talk about the science of it, you can talk about the treatments for it, but unless you have felt the inability to experience joy, you can't understand it. Yeah, and I, I certainly understand it. I've actually done my own TEDx talk sharing my own story about my depression and suicidal thoughts. So um, from, from one, one person that's experienced to another, thanks so much for everything that you've done, Michael. Really appreciate you spending time with us. Uh, we'll be back with more right after this.